Cardinal Coffee. We're up here on the second floor of our house and we're gonna be building this roof today. Hopefully it's gonna be done. Just so you know, there's kind of one roof here. There's another roof on this section that's lower. There's another porch roof out there and there's another porch roof out there that has a shed and a gable. Yeah, and they're all independent, separate of each yeah. other. So this so. will be fun. Lots of different roofs. Fun. I feel like I'm working with Bono and ZZ Top today right here. <laughs> you guys gonna sing me a song at lunch? Um, no. Have you heard me sing? Yes. <laughs> My wife yells at me all the time. I mean, we'll be camping with just her and I, and she'll be like, <laughs> and I'm like, dude, no one's listening to she's me. She's listening. Yeah, she's like. to point this out it's a different framing technique here so oh right right here this is like a, a wall connection partition yeah i don't know if this is like some kind of advanced framing technique people might call it but there's not a whole lot of advance about it we just simply forgot to put the wall tee in uh, the partition in the exterior wall and instead of building one in place i just blocked these pieces of two by four blocking these are cut 14 and a half inches to go between the studs every 24 inches on center vertically and uh, it can... gives you a good place to get insulation in behind this wall partition. And it's really fast and easy. So and how much use... did this cost? Oh, well, this is, I would dare say, a lot cheaper because this was all scrap. So I would say zero. Yeah, I in mean. a wall partition like this uh, over studs. here, three studs. That's uh, five bucks a stud. Fifteen bucks. Fifteen for that. Zero for this. I want to say the person that's not going to love this, though, is the drywall guy because he doesn't uh... have now a solid place to screw his drywall corner, he has to actually mark where these are and be a little bit deliberate. So that would be the one downside. Yeah, I think they're okay with that though. They can do it. We believe in you, Rex. Yeah. Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We got our ceiling joists up, that's great. And our next move, before we put the rafters up, we're gonna put some boards down on top of our ceiling joists called rat runs. I guess little rats could run on these things in their attic or something. But the reason for them is to space all the ceiling joists to the correct spacing out in the center of the span because they're probably bowed left and right and like crazy. Can you start the TL again up on the cliff cam? Yeah, I hope you're joking. <laughs> Why are you not joking? Huh? Arlo's already put our layout on here, so I just have to basically move these until they're on layout and you can see why we're doing it because otherwise they'd be off layout. All you can go, bub. I'm not moving. End of the line. So we've got a rat run to here, but starting there, we've got a wall that's in the center of the span, and our joists are screwed down to that, so we don't need a rat run here, so we'll just cut it there. Wow. <laughs> she's, a little, she's a little shaky, Daddy. Yeah, so, because we don't have sheathing on a lot of this already, we're going to put some more bracing up, because right now it's like... <laughs> Yeah, don't this is not a real inspiring thing. Oh, our man. Here's our man. There you go. Brace, brace it up. Man. Yep. So nice diagonal. Guy. Yep. Attack that screw there. Nice. <laughs> it's like surreal. Like it's not even real. Like if you just kind of focus your eyes on like one spot, it just all blends in. It's yeah. Nice. This beat is staring in a cubicle any day of the week, twice on Sunday. Hey, I'd like to grab this board. Oh, sorry, guy. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, he was giving a speech right then. look at our ridge post and this thing is special yeah it is <laughs> we've got these blocks to sort of let the ridge beam nestle in right there but they're held back an inch and a half so that our first rafter these don't interfere with it right see people don't think about that i would never think about well, that. jamie thought jamie about does it. well yeah because yeah, yeah. he thinks everything so that's what we're doing. this ridge beam right here let's talk about it it is a non-load bearing ridge beam and Really what it comes down to is the two rafters are gonna hit like this on it, 
Yep. And all it is is giving us the place to know where the center of the ridge is. We could even do without this, and we could let the two rafters just touch each other. And there's no way they can spread because the ceiling joist is a giant collar tie that'll be in tension. And as long as the ceiling can't spread, the roof can't sag. Right. It's, it's a big triangle. And if you don't know, the thing about triangles is if you look at them like this, they have three sides. Yeah, try. Think about Confirmed. That. We're confirming that that's correct. <laughs> Nothing gets by this guy. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I love how Arlo really doesn't leave anything to question here. No, you can tell it's a butt joint. Yep. It says so. It's going to be right there for sure. <laughs> That's really handy. I like that. As much fun as it is to just watch us build this roof, I figured it'd be more fun if we actually told you what was going on. Because there's a lot going on with this roof. It's not the typical roof we'd build for sure. There's no bird's mouth cuts on our rafter. We're just letting the full width rafter run across the corner of the wall plate. Now, people might just think that... Um, Maybe the bird mouse not necessary because it's always a pain for people that don't do this all the time. To figure it out and cut it. It's so Yeah, they're like, yeah. how do I do it? But Well, it is, it is more work. But let me tell you the reason we can do this is because also, again, the ceiling joists are, are bearing on those outside walls. Our rafters are running past those and they're fastened together with like 10 nails. So the rafter and the joist have become one. You couldn't do this on a vaulted ceiling like we're doing it. Vaulted ceiling, you have to have a bird's mouth so that the bottom of the rafter comes down to the corner of the inside of the wall plate, not the outside. Yeah, you know what you're describing though is beginning to sound a lot like a truss. Like a truss. We're building our own truss. And it just has thicker members like two by eights instead of two by fours. And the third thing is the overhang, okay? On this one, it's gonna be big because I like big overhangs on low pitch roofs. I think it looks really cool. And we can do that because it's low pitch. The big overhang won't drop down into the top of the windows like on a steep pitch roof. Mm -hmm. So all that said, we have to figure out a way to support those overhangs. And what we're gonna do is use outriggers and we're gonna lap them out across the top of the outside rafters. In order to do that, we have to make notches in those rafters to run these outriggers out. And that will lessen the strength of the rafter, but it's okay because there's a wall built underneath the outside rafter mm -hmm. to help support it. This one, this one's on, so if you want to tag that tail where it is. You ever got hit right in the junk by a board? <laughs> yeah, <throw? laughs> about 30 seconds ago. Thanks to Harlow. He's a good throw. Yeah, that was a good shot. <laughs> oh my gosh. Call that wood to wood. <laughs> so we're fortunate enough here where I can stand on the ceiling system to do this. Uh, back in the day on some of these steeper ones, I would put these in and I would use them as a ladder to get... <laughs> To get up to the next one and basically climb up this steep pitch roof on these things climbing and, and installing until i would get to the ridge and then you'd have to climb back down so this feels a lot better and i'm glad to not be doing that today i want to take a quick break to thank house pro and they've been partnering with us on this entire job and if you didn't catch it yet house pro is an all-in-one business solution it's software made for contractors builders designers and it will help you solve many of the problems that we run into trying to keep track of clients leads pricing communication we've made with clients so please remember to check it out there's a link in the description down here and a phone number and it's free to try let's get back to work it's bringing back good memories for you all bad <laughs> Man, we used to do this so much it's terrible actually but makes it an overhang
We're back on site and we're gonna start buttoning up this roof by doing the gable ends and then the fascias. We're gonna work our way around with the scaffolding because we don't have enough to get all the way up on all the sides at once. Also, Huber's coming. They make this X-Factor Advantech. I thought about cleaning this floor up, <clears throat> but they need to see the harsh reality of what a floor goes through during construction. Like this was a pouring rain day, tracking mud in. That's what happens. That's, That's why happens. it's gotta be good. So I'll let them look at this as it sits. Sticking in the gable end, we call it. This technique here is one that we kind of fall back to and we really like where we're actually notching the top of the stud and attaching through the end rafter. It makes a really great connection. It actually squares up the rafter too. Something we have to check for is that this rafter is not crowned or sagging. Yeah. If it is, we're gonna push it up or pull it down because the overhang will then also have that same crown or sag. We try to get it straight. I as like possible. straight faces. Uh, so we're gonna we're gonna laser eye the uh, the sag or the crown, straighten it, and then we're gonna stud these in like we're doing here. Um, uh, what would be the alternative? Would be to add a plate to the bottom of that, like a two by four plate, instead of lapping them up. We could. I, I don't we think that'd be that. as strong. I don't think it'd be strong, and it doesn't have the same kind of squaring effect on the uh, rafter that I like. Uh, we are gonna have to put a nailer right here, like uh, if this was a two by four. On the inside, we're gonna put one right here. That'll make the ceiling drywall nailer for yep. the inside of the room. And uh, that's basically it though. This is a real simple way to do it. It's easy. You can see my cuts are actually even just square cuts. Mm -hmm. We used to cut them angled and get them fitted perfect. But it really doesn't matter. We realized it doesn't matter. As a matter of fact- The connection is up, up there. It's I cut them short by about an eighth of an inch. Um, I mean, really, this rafter You don't want to struggle and have to recut every one of these things. I, I don't need them to be exact. I don't really want them to be. And I don't want to take a chance on pushing it tight and nailing it and pushing the rafter up a little bit yeah. each time I go. That could yeah, be yeah. a problem. Uh, this is so strong. And when the plywood's lapped on, we're going to nail it all the way across there and down the studs. It'll be super strong. Did you guys just make a yellow pine fly rafter? Uh, if this is yellow pine and it's called a fly rafter, man, then yes. I did. love that. This is what I doing. love it, man. I didn't even ask you to do that. No, Jamie did. Oh, yeah, Jamie okay. Did. okay. All right. We have on site Huber Chris. That's Chris from Huber and Huber Page, Page from Huber. And we really got to talk to you about something really important here. Okay. Jamie's been calling every kind of sheet good plywood for like the entire time we've been building houses. I mean, it's time for it to come to an end. It's kind of ingrained. <laughs> In my oh head. no, okay. don't even. No, you can't joke your way out of this one. It's OSB. You gotta stuff. stop calling it plywood. It's plywood, right? <laughs> Big difference. Okay. okay. None of this is plywood. It's all sheet good or OSB. Okay, OSB. Got it. OSB. All right, we're done. All See right, ya. From Bye. now on, I, okay. I will Thank you. Be Thank you. Yep. Thank you so much. All right, we get a lot of comments on installing plywood. Wait, Wait did you just no. call it plywood? Oh, out of here. Cut. <laughs> this is my first chance and I messed all it right, up. Try again. Zip system. All right. We get a lot of comments when we're installing zip system on the walls that we should put the sheets vertically right. instead of horizontally. Now, there are some really kind of nitty gritty reasons why. And I was actually just teaching Paige about the strength <laughs> axis of a piece of plywood. And, uh, you know, there's there's things that did you can- Did you say plywood again? I'm, <laughs> oh, no, I did. <laughs> oh my goodness. Wow, it's worse right, than I so thought. So Paige, let me take wrist. over. Paige, we get busted on for installing our sheet good, our zip sheathing. system. Sheathing, can we just say sheathing? Yeah, you can say that. It's, it's not sheathing. On the horizontal across our studs versus vertically installing the panels. What do you think? You can install them vertical or horizontal. It is a stronger axis if you go, you know, in this direction that you guys have it laid out. Yeah, that's a strength axis I was teaching her about a minute ago. <laughs> yeah. Now she's using it like she's like known it forever, whatever. <laughs> I noticed awesome framers like to put theirs on vertically. Yep. yep. So maybe you can hook us up at the International Building Show and, and you can let us talk about it with them. Absolutely. Yeah, it'd be my pleasure. They've got to have a reason for doing it that way. They do, and Tim will fill you in on it. Hey Tim, tell me all about it. Secrets, <laughs> yes. Can't reach it. Okay, hold on. Okay. I got it, I got it, I got it, I got it, I got it. All right, got it. That looks good. It does, it looks awesome. I'm not worried about that coming off of there ever. Super strong, tied back in. It's 
nice. Big and, overhangs. And the uh, the roof sheathing will lap over that too, so there's really no way these could come up, even if like they just came unfastened somehow. It's all tied together. So what's up next here? Our wall sheathing. Our zip system. Zip system OSB. Right. <laughs> There you go. Now it's you're getting it. not plywood. You're getting the hang of it. Plywood is something else. It is. Totally different. Seriously, though, it was awesome being able to meet Chris and Paige from Huber. They are an excellent company to work with, and we just really love their products. So thank you to them for coming out to see us on the job. Hope you all had a safe trip back home. And hopefully I didn't scare you to death backing down these crazy mountain roads to get out of here. Well, they had to ride with you. Hope you brought a... What is that <laughs> stuff that you have to take if you get... Um, Dramamine? Dramamine. Did you give them some Dramamine before you drove them around? No. Just gave him coffee. A little brown paper bag, something, just in case. <laughs> Man, I feel like Paige really set Jamie straight on that plywood stuff. Uh, so I'm going to set you straight, actually. Yeah. This is not duct tape. <laughs> I mean, it's the same system concept, flashing. dude. So Jason was calling the stuff duct tape to the Huber reps. So I was like, oh my gosh, you're not doing that. But he was. So uh, he's like, yeah, what do you use the duct tape for? I'm like, oh my gosh. Wow. Thanks for doing that. Whatever, dude. <laughs> they're, not, they're just people just like us. This is where the project slows down. We have to have a ground guy and then a middle guy to hand the sheathing up from the middle up to us on top. And you can see why that's slower than working off the ground. How'd you get ground guy? I was showing up to work today. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you weren't here. He's our third string cut guy. Yeah. That's right. <laughs> Arlo's gone. Jono's gone. So we got Ray. Okay. That's I'll tell enough. you, though. I'll tell you, though. The way he's been cutting today, uh, they might have to try out for their position again. We might have to have, like, a little tryout. Okay. Because uh, the new guy, the rookie guy, he's playing good today. So. <laughs> okay. He's throwing some touchdowns. Huh? Yeah. I'm telling him. We're going to have to have a little tryout system here. See that move right there? Yeah. Did you plan that? Yeah, I did. Come on, did I plan it? Yeah. Okay. All right, we got it. Watch me zip. Watch me nanny. <laughs> no, no, no. Watch me zip, zip. No, Watch no, me nanny. we're not doing that. <laughs> you got the wrong show, bud. Get your zip roller I'm, out of there so oh, I can zip use roller. it. Oh, Jeez. there you go. Ugh. Still not doing that. Watch me zip, zip. Watch me nanny. Nope. The reason we're saying roll the tape, roll the tape is because that's the instructions. Roll the tape with the zip tape roller. And that's because it's a pressure activated type of ad adhesive on this tape. My guess as to why that is, is they don't want it to be fully activated while it's still in the roll because then you might not be able to get the roll peeled apart. What do you think about that? When they first started making this stuff, it had a paper backing and they got rid of it. And at that point you didn't have to roll the tape. Mm. So I'm just that's just my, I, that's my thought. That's it's like my CSI investigation. Yeah, right here. You're I mean, like so intuitive. if I had to guess, that's just a guess. What's your bet? Will he be able to stop saying plywood when re referring to any kind of sheet goods no. ever? No. no, that's your bet? Never. You know what? I realize it's a trap. Every time you ask me a question about uh, zip system, it's a trap. I'm going to say plywood again. I'm catching on. Pro tip here is I'm trying not to blast the nail head straight through the OSB layer of this zip system. So I've got the depth set. So I'm trying to go like this, like flush. This one's flush. That one I need to hit once with a hammer. That was loud. But I'm okay with that. If you have it set all the way, sometimes it'll blast too deep and then you lose some of that strength of the nail holding your sheet goods to the wall. And we're using full round nails too, full rounded head nails. Yo, hey, where'd you get that green scratch on your hood? Oh, uh, I, I was just guessing about 30 seconds ago. <laughs> <laughs> no big deal. Don't worry about it. Don't, don't be looking over here. Don't worry. It's fine.
Man, look at that. We worked till sundown. It's disappearing. Yeah, let's not do that again. <laughs> <laughs> That's good.